Hey, ladies and gentlemen, Mark Price here at DevSlopes.com, and let's get our wish lists going here. So first things first is we need to be able to create a new wish list. Usually when you are working with APIs, you typically want to do the create ones first because you can't really fetch something and test that it's working until you've created something and put test data in there. Uh, that's just what I like to do. So let's go ahead and do an app.post. Of course, post is for uh, creating. And we're going to say slash wish, wish list. Okay, I'm struggling with that word today. Function request response. Response. Okay, looks good there. And uh, var wish list equals new wish list. And remember, this wish list right here is our mongoose model that's coming from up here. Okay. And so we're creating a new one. And then we're just going to say wish list dot title equals request dot body dot title. Now, should we do error handling? Probably. Like, if there's no title, do this or that. Or you, you may want to do something like that. Uh, or if you needed a title and they didn't put it there, you could actually um, specify as required in your model, and it would send you it would send back the error message automatically for you, which is kind of cool. So request.body.title, and then all we need to do is save a wish list. So you've seen the syntax before. This is a simple one, right? Wish list .save, and then there's the function callback error, and then the new wish list. And uh, what do we want to say? If there's an error response.status 500.send error could not create wish list okay otherwise it was successful and what do we want to do is simply send it back so response.send and we'll send back the new wish list to the user okay Simple enough. Let's go ahead and test this out. Of course, we're using NodeMon, so these changes are detected automatically and our server's restarting. Just give it a few seconds. And so let's do a new tab here, and we're going to do a post request. And this will be HTTP localhost, okay, 3000 slash wish list. All right, and let's go to the body, raw and JSON to application dot slash JSON. And it's just a title. Let's call this. Uh, Mark's, you know, video game list. Okay, let's send it. And it was successful because we got an object ID back. Okay, so it sent back our new wish list, which is great. And this is what I was telling you about before. Whereas in your client, your web app or mobile app, you may want to uh, take this, replace the existing one you just posted up because now it has an ID that you can reference for later. Like if you wanted to update the wish list or something like that pretty cool all right so that's looking good here all right all right all right so what's the next thing we want to do is how about getting a list of wish lists okay so we'll put it above the post so app dot get I'm gonna say wish list function request response okay and then let's say wish list dot find let's find them all and uh, yeah but well, let's 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 keep going here. We'll, we'll handle some problems here in a minute. Function error and uh, wish lists. It's going to send it back all of our wish lists, of course. And then um, we could say response dot send. We'll handle the error in a second. I just want to test something out here real fast. Response dot send wish lists. Let's see if that's working. So let's go back over here to Postman. Let's just change this to a get request and send. Okay, so Mark's video game list, great. Well, notice how there's no products in it. It's it's empty right now, so that's kind of a problem, right? We can't really test out. This is the problem that we're running into. We can't really test out getting a list of wish lists yet because our wish list doesn't have the data in it for the products. Like, we really need to be able to test the full thing. I wouldn't consider this an accurate test. Like, if my boss is like, okay, did you create an endpoint to get a a list of wish lists. You're like, yeah, I did. Well, you, re you really didn't test it. You don't know if it's working because we don't see anything here. So we got to fix that. So what we should probably do is actually create an endpoint to add a product to a specific wish list. Okay. So what we're going to do is under the post request, we are going to say app dot put. Okay. So we're going to update a wish list. We're going to say wish list and 
rather than just saying slash wish list, I kind of want it to be more specific. So the actual app can be like, oh, this is where you add new things. Okay. So we're going to say function request response repository response. Okay. And let's put our parenthesis here and let's write out this code now. So we want to add a new product. So how do we do that? Well, first things first is we got to find the product first in the database. You know, who knows what the client's sending up? The web app could be sending up a wrong product or a product ID or, or something could be going wrong. So we got to first find that product in our database. That's the first thing I know we need to do before we can add anything to any wish list. So product dot find one. We're only going to find one. We want to find it by the ID. We're going to say request dot body dot product ID. So the client's going to pass up the ID of the product that we want to find and add to the list. Okay. So let's find it first. Then we're going to say function error and product. Okay. So now that we've found it, well, let's do some error handling. Good old error handling response dot status 500 dot send error could not add item to wish list. Okay. Let's add a semicolon here. Else, what do we want to do? Well, at this point, we know there's a product. So now we can actually update our wish list. Okay. So we can say wish list dot update. This is a new one. Okay. We're using the dot update function here of a, of the wish list model, mongoose model. Okay. So remember on, on an update, the first criteria is the search. We got to find the wish list first. So let's find the wish list, which wish list do we want to update. Well, that needs to come from the client. So request dot body dot wish list ID. So we got to find it first. Okay. And then we can add the product to the products array in the wish list. So then we could say dollar sign add to set. Okay. And this is very similar to doing it in the Mongo shell add to set. And we're going to say products. All right. And we're going to say product dot underscore ID. Okay. And then we can do the function, the error and the wish list that was just updated. I know we're getting deep here. Okay. But this is good stuff. So wish list dot update. We're going to update a wish list. So the first thing we got to do is find it. Remember the first parameter in the dot update function is finding. Okay. So we're going to find, uh, where the ID is equal to this wish list ID. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add the set. This is a special function that adds an item to a set. So remember we have in our wish list, we have an array of products. When we say add to set, we say, okay, which set, which, what's the property name? And we say, well, it's called products. And what do we want to add to it? Well, we don't want to add the whole product, like the title and all that stuff, because remember all we're adding is the product ID an object ID. This is where the type object ID comes into hand. We're saying it's a product, but we only want to store the ID. We don't want to duplicate the data. So yes, add the product ID of the product we just found in the database that came up from the client. And then if there's an error, of course, you know, we can actually probably just copy and paste this here, which is fine for now in the future. If we are copying and pasting a lot, we're kind of violating the dry principle. So we may want to like put a global error message or something, which we could do. And then uh, otherwise it was successful. So response dot status, actual response dot send. And we're just going to send the wish list back to the user. Okay. This is really cool. So let's give this a nice little test here. So here's our, some of our products, right? Ashes, chains, all things like that. So let's go ahead and create our wish list. So what I'm going to do is see this object ID right here. I'm going to copy this on this item. And what I want to do is go to postman. Okay. And let's create a new put request. And it was wish list slash product slash add. So product slash add. All right. And what I want to do is go to the body and what we want to put over here is the things that we specified in our code. So we need to send up the product ID inside the body. And then there's a wish list ID as well too. So this should be product ID. So the client of course is working with this specific product. So it has that ID available to it. So the product ID, and this is where we paste that product ID. Uh, in our case, it was the very first item, the vault boy bobblehead. 
All right, then we're going to put a comma here and then wish list ID colon. And then we're going to grab the wish list ID. So it's actually this one right here, Mark's video game list. So this is the ID that we want to update and add to. Does that make sense? So here we are, we have our web app or mobile app. And what we're doing is we've got a, we've got a list of products in the app. The server sent us back that list and we have all the IDs. And now we're clicking on a button that says, hey, I want to add a product to my wish list. And so under the hood in our mobile app, we're writing the code. Since, since we don't have the code for that, we haven't created that. We're just using Postman. We've got to pretend. And so we've, we're passing up the product ID of the, that we want to add to the wish list and the wish list that we want to add it to right here and right here. Okay. And then so if I click send, it broke. <laughs> Cannot put wish list product ID add. I probably broke something here. Let's take a look. Let's see if uh, the server's yelling at us at all. Uh, it's not yelling at us, but let's see what's going on here. Make this a little bit smaller so I can see. Okay. Response that send wish list. Could not add item to wish list. Could not add item to wish list. Let's do some air handling here. Okay, so HTTP localhost 3000 wish list slash product slash add. Did we spell that correctly? Wish list slash product slash add. Request response, response, response. Let's see here. Do you spot the error? Let's see. Request.body.productid. That looks good. Function error and product. Send. Okay, else wishlist.update, where the ID is request.body.wishlistid. Okay, and then we're adding to the set. Add to set, and then it's products and product dot underscore ID and then we have the function the error and the wish list and then we send it back but in our case it's not working cannot put wish list product add localhost wish list slash product slash add I don't see why not JSON application let's copy this here try it again same response. Ooh, this is fun. This is really fun. What did we do wrong? Oh, I think I know what it is. We didn't put a slash here. So our URL's wrong. Ha ha. Ha ha ha. Right, let's try this again. Send. There we go. So it modified one. Okay. Oh, this is interesting. So it sent back that it modified one. So what it's actually sending back here is it's sending back the status. It's actually not sending this back the, um, it's not sending back the entire wish list here. That, that's okay. Um, you can send back whatever you want. Uh, in this case, ours is sending back just the default message that it comes from, from the database saying, remember when you insert into Mongoose and stuff, it sends back a message. Apparently that's all it's giving us back in this case. So you could send that back or you could go ahead and say, you know, successfully, you know, added to wish list. Okay. That's probably makes more sense. So we've added it. Now we can go back to our, our function that we were working on before the get function for wish lists. And let's see what happens if we just fetch a wish list. Okay. So let's go back to our get request. Uh, it's not even here in the list. That's okay. We'll create a new one. Local host. 3000 slash wish list. And let's go ahead and do the fetch. Okay, so here's our wish list. But you know what? This is not helpful at all. It's just an ID of products. Now, that's what we stored, of course. We are storing the product ID so we don't have to duplicate data. But when it comes back to the client, I actually need the data in the app. Like, we need to work with it. I don't want to have to get the ID back in the app, especially if it's a mobile app, and then have to call the server again and say, hey, give me the data for this ID. And what if there was a 1,000 in here? That would be a lot of work. So what we actually want to do is we want to populate the data with the IDs that are in there so we don't have to do double the work, okay? Which I think is pretty dang awesome. So let's go ahead and do that now. We're going to populate some data. So here in our get, okay, we did this wish list up fine. We had this callback and stuff. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to change this around. So we are still going to do the wish list dot fine. Okay. But this time we're going to populate the data. So instead of putting the air handler or the callback function here, we'll put it somewhere else later. 
So we're going to say dot find. And then what we're going to do is a keyword or a function called populate. Okay. And we're going to populate at a path. And what's the path we want to populate is products. So remember here in our wish list, we've got a path here or a property called products. So I'm spelling the exact same name here that's in our wish list. So we're saying the path that I want to populate is products. Okay. Well, then it's like, okay, well, what model does that belong to? And we specify that here. This belongs to the product model, which of course we define in product spelled exactly the same. Very important. So we're saying the path is products and the model is a product. Okay, then we want to execute it by doing dot execute. And then we can put the callback function in. Okay. And it's going to send all the wish lists back. Okay. So what's the difference? Well, we didn't put it in here in the find this time. We're saying find all. But this time populate on every one that we find populate the products array inside of it. Okay, remember here before it just gave us an ID. What we're hoping for is instead of an ID, it gives us all the data for each for each item in the list. Okay, so now we can do our standard stuff. If there's an error, a response dot send or status is 500 dot send, and we're going to say error could not fetch list wish lists. Okay. Otherwise, else. Okay. Then we'll say response dot status two hundred twenty three dot send, and this one's going to be the uh, wish lists. Wish lists as defined right here. Okay. So all we did was we did the po dot populate on this particular product path and model. So let's go over here to our postman. And now when we do this one again, instead of showing IDs, it should show all the data for it. And we just gone and broke something. I probably have a syntax error somewhere. So we have a reference error, unhandled error event, response is not defined. It's because I spelled it wrong. Uh, that's really good to know. I'm glad this error showed up. You can go to your terminal at any time where your server's running. It'll tell you the line of code even. Uh, on line 42, we broke something. So right here. Sure enough, I spelled it wrong. It couldn't handle it. It couldn't handle my syntax error. Send? Yay. Okay, look, products now has the data inside of it, which is really awesome. Okay? So we just populated this. So we've done a lot of things here. We're done. Okay? This is really cool. You've built in your very first API that's actually talking to a database. We've done some CRUD operations. We've talked about how to... Uh, fetch items, how to save new items using Mongoose. We've talked about populating items, okay? How to get, we're storing references to items and how to actually populate it when you're sending back to the client so you're not going back to the client and then having to talk to the API again to do all these different calls and your app's running slow now. Uh, we're making it a very good experience, okay? We can find one. This one's really interesting. If I had done product.findall or just find, it would have returned everything, okay? All of them. And so this right here would have been, hand, would have been an array. And so if I tried grabbing the product ID out of it, it would be null because it's an array. We'd have to get the first element out of it. So again, that's a rookie mistake. You know, if you're only looking for one item, make sure you specify find one. And then so we find the product, then we add it to the wish list using the add to set. So much, so many things going on here, but here's a really cool thing. In all of my API development, what we're doing here is about 90% of what you'll be doing all the time. Of course, things will get more complex. You'll do authentication and, and other things. But this is really where you spend the bulk of your time. After your project and your framework's all set up, this is what you spend over and over and over doing is doing these types of things, making the relationships, fetching the data, sending it back, deleting, updating, all that good stuff. So congratulations on now becoming a full stack developer. And it's time for you to keep practicing and building your own APIs. That's it for now. Mark Price at devslopes.com. See you next time. I'm not going to